Welcome to Make Something. I'm David Petrudo. Today I'm going to show you how to make this miniature cabinet with a hidden storage compartment. And today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. Check it. This is going to be fun. This is one of those projects you could batch out a whole bunch to sell or make as a gift or even make it for yourself. And I will have plans available for this. I did not have walnut wide enough, so I had to glue a couple boards together. Right now it's about three quarters of an inch thick. So I'm gonna run it through my planer to get it down to a half inch. I've got that plane down to a half inch thick. And while I was at the planer, I went ahead and planed down more material for the drawer and the two doors that will be used in a later step. So the next thing I need to do is rip and cross cut the four pieces for our outer carcass. So now it's time to cut the miters on all four pieces. And I'm gonna sneak up on that perfect cut. So I know that on my first try, it's not gonna go all the way to the edge. So once I run that through, I will then nudge my fence over and then run it through again. It might take two or three times. Once I get that first edge, I can flip the board around and do the other side. And on, on the parallel piece that has the same length, all I gotta do is run it through once on one side and then once again on the other side. Basically a miter joint like this is end grain to end grain. And that's not very strong if you just throw glue on there because those fibers are gonna soak up all of that glue. And I'm not gonna put any splines on there to reinforce this. So a way for me to get around that is to just take some regular wood glue and thin it down a little bit with water. It doesn't take much. And then I'm just going to brush it on there and then we're gonna let that dry for an hour or so. The reason I thinned it down is so it really gets in there and stabilizes the wood and will give us a nice joint to glue up in the next step. And I'm gonna do this with all the mitered edges. Once all of those have glue on there, we'll just let that sit and dry for an hour or so, and we'll come back to it. I'm kinda of doing things out of order, but it doesn't really matter. While I'm waiting for this glue to dry, I'm gonna go over to the table saw and cut the daddles that's going to hold the center divider. And then after that, I am going to cut the rabbit on all four pieces that's going to hold the back. I'm just gonna use a single blade, but in woodworking, there are multiple ways to do nearly everything. You could do this at the router table. You could also use a daddle blade. Run what you brung, use what you got. I always like to sand all the insides before gluing up. It just makes life a lot easier. I've got some tape on the outside and now I'm just gonna start putting glue on these miter joints. And don't forget to put in your middle divider, which is gonna go in there like so. Take a brush, spread it around. I don't want a lot of squeeze out, so I'm not using a whole bunch. Drop this guy in there. And fold this up. Let me get a couple pieces of tape ready. Line that up. We got that center divider in there so we can put a cute little drawer there, a couple doors here, and then on the back, we got that rabbit in there all along the outside so we can put it back on there. And that's also going to strengthen this since we aren't doing any kind of reinforcements on the miters. And that middle shelf was cut just a little bit shorter to allow that back to sit on there. It is the next day. It's a lot colder today than it was yesterday. Welcome to fall in Ohio. So now it's time to work on the back here. And we have that rabbit cut all along the inside and we're going to put a piece of plywood in there. I highly suggest using plywood because that's going to stabilize the entire cabinet. 
you have three options for the back. One is you find some walnut plywood. Already looks great and it fits in there. This is 3 16 and it is nice and flush with the back. If you don't have access to walnut plywood, you could find some 1 8 inch Baltic birch, cut it to width and length and set it in there. And it has a nice little decorative inset right there. And it's contrasting. If you want it to be walnut, you can veneer this. And I don't have any walnut veneer, but I do have some cherry. So I'm gonna show you how I would do this if I was going to veneer this with some walnut veneers. This is a great trick if you don't have a vacuum press. I'm gonna take my 1 8 inch Baltic birch plywood and I'm just going to brush on some wood glue, just regular wood glue. Let that sit and dry. Same thing with my veneers. Just gonna brush on some wood glue and let that sit and dry. Once the glue is dry, I can take my veneers and position it on the piece and use an iron to iron it down and it's going to melt that glue and you will have a nice, beautiful veneered sheet of plywood. That's a great little trick to veneer plywood. So now that this carcass is all done, I am going to make the drawer and the doors. All right, a slight change of plans. And by slight, I mean a pretty big change of plans. The original thought was to have a drawer right here and then two cute little doors that opened up down here. And those little doors would have this pin on there and there would be a hole drilled in here and here and here and here. And that pin would ride on those holes. Turns out I can't get my drill in there because this opening is not big enough. Now I could use brass hinges, but it wasn't something that I was planning on. And so to make this a little bit more fun, I'm going to make this one big drawer that has a hidden compartment in there. It's gonna make the project that much more fun. And plus I might do a little divider down the middle of that big drawer to make it look like two doors. I always love being open to calling an audible when a project needs it. And I think it's gonna make this project a lot more fun. So one little drawer and one big drawer, and they're both going to use the same mitered corners and a plywood bottom as the outside carcass. So let's go cut those up. So the drawers are done, made out of all walnut, except for the front face, which is made out of hickory. If you're doing this, I think maple would also work. If I push these in, you might see some inconsistencies in the gaps there. And one way to hide that is to add a little chamfer around all four edges of the drawers here. Uh, you could also use a round over, but I always prefer chamfer. I think it looks classier for what I do. And then I might also route a little V groove down the middle here to give this the illusion of two little doors. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work. Everything is an experiment. Rule number four. We got that chamfer around the outside edges and it hides those inconsistencies and adds a nice little look to it. And then I got the divider down the middle of the big drawer. And then if I put a handle here and a handle here, it's going to keep the same vision that I originally had. So now we are going to work on the hidden drawer part. We're gonna put a rail here and a rail here and a false bottom that's going to sit on that rail. And if you just open up the drawer, you would never know that there's a little hidden section in there. I cut two of these rails with a 45 degree angle at one end. And if I glue these to the bottom of the drawer and then put in our false bottom, it just looks like a normal drawer bottom, but I can press up here, pull this out and reveal the hidden area. So now it's time to make the legs for this guy. The legs are an inch wide and I only have half inch walnut stock left. So basically I'm just going to double this up and glue pieces together. I've got my templates printed out and it's in three pieces. This is a very mid-century modern style and the reason I have it in three pieces instead of one is I want the grain direction going in a certain way for each piece.
And just like the drawers and the cabinet, these are basically end grain to end grain. So I put some glue on there, let that dry. And now I'm going to put some more glue on there. These are at an odd angle. So it's hard to get clamps on there. And that's where painter's tape comes in real handy. After that dries for about an hour or so, we'll sand that down and I'll just put a little glue on the top here and glue it right to the bottom. If you have any gaps in the miter, like I do right here, we're just gonna take a little bit of glue, not much, and then take a screwdriver and you just kind of round that over and it's gonna close that gap. It's now time to put some finish on here. If you think this is going to get some abuse, you're gonna to wanna to use something like a polyurethane. I'm using this overpriced Odie's oil. And the reason I like this is because of a couple reasons. One, I like the way it looks. That's important to me. It smells amazing. I know that's really weird to say. Uh, and also, um, it dries right away. So, I mean, I could put this in the house tonight if I want to. And while I am putting oil on here, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. I know a lot of you are like me, you're a woodworker or a crafter or an artist or a maker, you need a place to show off your work, either to get clients or to sell. And Squarespace is the perfect solution for that. Here's what you're gonna wanna do. You're gonna go to squarespace.com, you're gonna start your free trial, and you're gonna play around with it, and you're gonna see how easy it is to use and set up pages and galleries and all kinds of stuff, a contact form, you can bring in your social media feeds, and when you are ready to launch, you visit squarespace.com slash make something, that's me, and you will get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I like Squarespace so much that every website I operate is a Squarespace site now. Thank you to Squarespace for making these videos possible. Thank you for Squarespace for making my website so easy to use and update. And thank you to you for sticking around. And then I'm using like the, uh, the, the body filler scraper to just move it around so I can get as much use out of it as I can. Cause like I mentioned, it's a little pricey, but I like it. Sometimes I like pricey stuff. I am a man of luxury. There it is, all completed. I waxed the bottoms of the drawers so they slide in and out with ease and then added the drawer pulls on there. And I really, really love the way this came out. Links to all the equipment and materials that I use down in the video description. I will have plans available for this on my website. I've been told I have some of the best plans in the business, even better than some of the magazines. My plans are very easy to read. It's one step per page and it's well illustrated. And it goes step by step with everything that you need to do to make this. And this is a pretty easy project with the miter corners, no fancy joinery at all. Also on my website, I've got merch. I've written three woodworking books. It's getting to be Christmas time. You might wanna make some gifts so those books might come in handy. And I also have this really cool poster I designed with a fraction to millimeter to metric conversion chart. This is complete, this is done, but I might make a second part to this video where I do some inlay on the top and the sides, and then also add some sort of texture to the drawer faces. So I might break out the shape or origin and have some fun with that. If you wanna see that video and see what we can do to enhance the look of this, let me know down in the comments if that's something you're interested in. I know some people don't like the CNC, but that shape or origin, it's pretty cool. It's a handheld CNC that does some really cool things. If you think I deserve it, hit that like button and give me your subscription. I put out all kinds of fun woodworking tutorials. Then I also have a second channel that I'm reviving. It's gonna have some auto body work and everything that's just kind of not related to what I do here in this shop. So you might wanna check that out. That is gonna do it. We'll see you all in a few days with another woodworking project. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, be nice to each other and make something.